Greetings, you fellow pleasant primitives, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome to our first full playthrough with the new DLC, First Contact, and of course, one of the brand new Origins. Today, we're going to be doing a full playthrough with the Payback Origin. This is one of the two challenging Origins in which you get some serious negatives to begin with, but it is all to do with the story. So expect a lot of reading today as we go throughout the galaxy and make it a much, much safer place. This civilization has been visited by an alien empire who forcibly enlightened and enslaved them. They have repelled their invaders, but will they return? This is a challenging origin with 10 or fewer pops than normal to begin with, which is already such a massive downside. We have several techs, which we simply don't have. We have an infrastructural disadvantage. So as you can tell, this is a really, a really bad start, no matter where you are in the galaxy. However, you do get a special archaeology site, and there will be your invaders somewhere in the galaxy. Apparently there's also a Broken Shackles origin which always spawns in as well, so if you have one of the origins, the other origin always spawns in if you're playing PvE, as of course we are today. Somewhere the Advanced Empire is out there who may try and reclaim us in the future. I've managed to stay mostly spoiler free for this, so we're going to be learning together as we complete this origin. Now, how exactly are we going to make the galaxy a better place? The answer, of course, is through glorious warfare to protect all pre-FDL civilizations. We are fanatically xenophobic. After being forcibly enlightened and forced to evolve ourselves over a short period of time, we have become incredibly distrustful of all other advanced life, at least any life which has already attained FDL travel. We are going to be incredibly kind to pre-FDL civilizations, so primitives we are going to be very nice with. That's the only reason why I don't go down the route of fanatic purifier. We are a authoritarian because of our glorious leader who led the rebellion to take back our world. We are memorialists, not because we particularly care about the dead, but we like to laugh at them. We are masterful crafters because of course we are with our beautiful shells that we shed every few months. Yes, every few months, this is a very weird species indeed. We actually use them as part of our crafting materials and thus masterful crafters make sense. Plus, I do want the home world to be a serious forge world by the end. It's going to be producing all of our alloys and a lot of our consumer goods, if not all of them. So this is really needed for those extra building slots and we kind of just need a good start because Yeah, less population. It's gonna be pretty brutal if I was doing this completely meta I think I'd probably go down the route of fanatic egalitarian to really pump out those um, Better resources early on so lots of tech lots of unity all that stuff But I also like the idea of extremely rapid expansion. We can't get much from our world to begin with So let's get it all from space as for the Torty Boys themselves, this is where we are. Slow learners, because they're only in the position they are currently due to their uplifting via force. They are unruly, only recently unifying against a common foe. Now they're all alone, it's going to be a bit more difficult to keep that unity together. They are strong, and they are relying on incubators. This was the process of the Enlightenment, making sure there are more of them, which of course was the undoing of their captors in the long run, and they are thrifty. Trade value from their beauty beautiful shells. Again, that's probably what brought the invaders in the first place. Everything on this world is worth a fortune, at least to the greater galactic community. So that is pretty much it. We're going to be going with the Payback Origin. Again, there'll be lots of reading throughout this run because there's going to be lots of events, hopefully. And I'm hoping that becoming a fanatic xenophobe won't really stifle all of the pre-FDL stuff, because as you can see, Fanatic Xenophile gives you extra envoys as usual and trade value, but now also gives you extra insights from observing pre-FDL civilizations. Hopefully that doesn't mess it up, because I want to be Fanatic Xenophile with one of the other origins. So as for our difficulty, we're going with the settings we used in the previous challenge run, including Iron Man, which may be a mistake. I have heard some tell that there's a few bugs in the game at the moment, which always makes sense. Huge patch, huge DLC. There's always a few glitches, but I'm going to risk it and go with um, Iron Man. I may end up regretting that. We're going with scaling difficulty to mid-game, but we're having the mid-game incredibly early. Crisis type is set to random. I will be doing the all run eventually, don't you worry. Crisis strength, of course, set to maximum. And then we're going to double how many pre-FDL civilizations there are in the galaxy because I want to make sure we at least get some of the events that's the entire purpose of this DLC so I really really want to see them so we are doubling that which is a bit of a weird one but that's what we're going with and that's pretty much it the end game of course is set 75 years early as well so let's begin 
Hi everyone, as is tradition with these full playthroughs, Future Lathrix here, just here to say that this first of the three full playthroughs I'm currently planning for all of the Origins went absolutely weirdly. As you can imagine, there is loads of new stuff to learn, loads of new stuff to do, and the playthrough had a lot of reading through many, many events. I'm still a little bit on the fence about the DLC as a whole, I've mentioned this on Twitter, and your opinions on the DLC would be very welcome in the comments below, just keep it civil. Overall though, I did have a really good time with this full playthrough, and I'm sure my my mind will be a little bit more set as we do the other two origins. So perhaps a review video will be coming soon, even though that's not normally what I end up doing. If you'd like that, again, tell me. So I really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's just get back to the past and get straight into it. Time to get some glorious payback. And of course, likes and comments help out so, so much since these long form videos are so, so poisonous to the algorithm as the lovely YouTube overlords continue to try and push shorts and we simply wish to wear trousers. Payback. We had a deal. When the visitors from the stars revealed themselves, they offered us a fair contract. Technological enlightenment to be repaid in installments. Within a generation, our planet was transformed into a so-called advanced civilization. When we read the fine print to repay our debt, they insisted we work for them on an indefinite term. When the leaders protested, the outsiders turned violent, we fought back. We won, though barely, and only after suffering sizable losses. Now our scientists finally have reverse engineered the secrets of FTL travel from the ships we destroyed. It's a big galaxy out there, but sooner or later, we're sure to meet our benefactors again. In fact, we're looking forward to it. It's time to get some payback. So here's our opening world, and as you can see, it is completely covered in debris. We have the destroyed MSI warship. I didn't actually see the name of that before. Mindless self-indulgence springs to mind, and that is pretty much it for the beginning. We do have ship debris, which will give us some tech if we remove them. We have a negative and a positive, and that's pretty much all I've seen in the past. I just loaded it up to make sure it works. So I'll be right back when some more events occur. Oh, yeah, and as you can see, we can't even make Corvettes to begin with. Yeah, let's try and get the basic tech sorted. That would be lovely. And let's get a construction vessel straight away, because I'm noticing we have a lot of material in our system. Oh, because we have absolutely no mining bases, that's why. Yeah, okay, we need to really get going then. This is a dreadful start. I mean, that's the whole point, but still. The battle against the alien invaders left our home system full of debris, shattered warships, and broken promises. The sheer amount of flotsam cluttering the area has made it harder to develop satellites and to launch spaceships from enlightenment. Under the proposed cleanup project, specifically designed construction ships will utilize nets to dredge the space in near orbit, allowing us to approach the MSI warship. Situation okay, we're gonna need two construction vessels, because right now I really, really want all this material there. Give us some resources, please. The cleanup operation is now complete. With our skies free from debris, our science ships are now able to approach the warship. System survey complete. Okay, there's the archaeology site mentioned in the origins. So let's send in our archaeologist and sort out the aftermath of battle. The warship that once threatened our homeworld still looms over us, a stark reminder of the fate we narrowly escaped. It is time to take back our skies and salvage the technological marvels contained within the wreck. Block okay, we removed some of the ship debris, giving us a chunk of unity and a research option. We are going down the route of expansion first. I don't really do this anymore. I don't think expansion is as strong as it once was a long time ago, but it just fits the vibe of this empire. Likely expansion, prosperity, supremacy. That's probably the first three we're going down, unless we get one of our ascensions super quickly. Our sensors cannot detect life signs within the derelict warship, and yet the engines still faintly buzz and the machines are at work inside the empty hulls. There is a good reason to believe the ship is still operational, and attempts to board it are sure to awaken its security system. We must proceed with caution. Our construction crews are clearing debris, repairing damage, and securing rooms, turning the warship that once terrorized our world into a base of operations. Amidst the wreckage, we have uncovered the bodies of a ship's crew, or rather, what's left of them. What to do with these remains is a matter of public debate. Dissect them, parade them through our cities, or even villains deserve a proper burial. Oh yeah, we are memorialists. Hmm. I'm gonna say that, but I'm assuming they're putting them into a museum. 
because that's just what we're like, apparently. We are going to end illness. That's how the invaders won us over. We allowed them to build gene clinics on enlightenment, eradicating most of the worst diseases within a generation. Now those clinics are breaking down, years of intense use, causing the machines within to grind to a halt. The proper functioning of the invaders' technology is beyond us. Can we reverse engineer it, or would we, or should we, repurpose this poison gift into something truly our own? Other empires might possess similar facilities, but asking the Xenos for help would only bring us shame. Okay, well, we're going to try and repair it, because we already have one of the sanctuaries, and I assume we kind of, yeah, planet li uh, limit one of one. I can only imagine that causing issues, so Situation let's attempt to repair it. Updated. Oh, unless maybe we could have got two, and that would have been really powerful. No, I doubt that would have worked. Okay, let's try and repair it. The bill. A small self-propelled cache just entered the edges of our home system, loudly announcing its arrival with a signal beacon. Once retrieved, the cache revealed its grim contents, a lengthy list detailing all of the military assets we destroyed during the war against the invaders, complete with crew casualties and the estimated value of each destroyed vessel. Our former invaders are officially demanding war reparations, this despite the fact that they are the ones who invaded us. Even more outrageously, they also claim that all the destroyed ships in our system are still their property, and any attempt to destroy refit or retro-engineer the wreckage will put us in breach of terms and conditions. A debt collection agency will soon contact us to settle the matter. Situation okay, I'm assuming we're, we're going to have to fight them. So, more corvettes. I mean, I, I needed more corvettes anyway for some more um, influence, so yeah, let's make sure we have a fleet ready, eh? As we scour the Warship Central database, the designs of our former masters have grown clear. The way they approach with enlightenment only to train us to be better owned pops, their well-honed plans and protocols, their calculated lies. Our world was clearly not their first attempt, but rather an example of their core business strategy. What a lovely group of people. Ah. Okay, so the gene clinic went boom, and we lost the pop, and because of that, we now have less pop growth and less happiness. Um, yeah, let's hopefully fix that in the future. But yeah, we've, we've, we have lost our gene clinic and now we have problems. And I've already got enough problems. I didn't need that as well. I would like some more unity, honestly. Should we try and go down a unity path to begin with on our home world or just continue to build more and more alloys and uh, consumer goods? Honestly, yeah, just go full-on economy at the moment, and then later on we'll specialise. This is going to be a really slow build. We have gained complete control of the derelict warship systems. We now must decide what to do with it. Depending on our needs, it could be a powerful asset for either war or research. Oh. We can either convert it into a flagship or a habitat. Situation log updated. Is it just a normal habitat, or is it going to be something special? Oh, man. I mean, I'm sure everyone goes goes the flagship option because it's a bloody flagship. It's a special ship. I mean, that's cool, right? But, would that be a unique habitat? Like, will it have... Following the repairs, this former instrument of death will be fully converted into a functioning habitat devoted to uncovering the secrets of MSI's technology. Oh, I bet everyone goes the warship and it fits our empire theme, but I really, really am curious about the habitat. I am terrible at choices. I kind of think I'm going to go with the habitat. It'd also be a tech thing, and that would be great for our empire and just another world. Oh, okay, fine. Go. Okay, we're going with the habitat. We're going with the habitat. If you're angry at that, tell me in the comments below. So there's our habitat. Kinda pretty. In fact, it's very pretty. Ooh, I love the model. Ooh, I really love the model. It's so mega corp esque. You could see that thing selling stuff. Okay, so it's a size 10 habitat, which already is pretty fantastic. We have research districts, so, it, so it's classed as being above a research um, planet, even though it's not. Technological cash, plus 10% to all research. Okay, so that's actually a really powerful research world. Got it. Still have no idea how strong the warship would have been, though, so I can't really say if it was worth it or not, but yeah, let's get our colony ship there as soon as possible, please. 
Dear Tortillion Trust, we are contacting you on behalf of the Minima Specialized Industries, and that's what MSI stands for, Mystery Solved, regarding an outstanding debt. Being a fledgling spacefaring society, we understand you may not be in the position to repay the full amount. Our aim is to aid you in selecting an appropriate repayment plan, one which will settle any outstanding debts without stifling economic growth. Accordingly, we are happy to offer you a consultation free of charge. It is our ardent wish that this matter can be settled amicably uh, okay let's let's say we were we were to settle okay so you can't pay the full amount essentially that's a ridiculous amount of energy credits or we can just pay every so many years that's actually not too much honestly but obviously we're not going to Ooh, there's other options pledge two pops to the debt collectors oh uh no, we refuse to pay, to pay and bring it on. We are truly sorry we were unable to reach an agreement in this matter. Is there any chance you would be willing to reconsider? According to the terms of the contract, if a debtor is unwilling or unable to pay, we are required to seize assets on behalf of our client. Bring it on. Oh, straight away they're bringing it on. Okay, I expect that to be a little while. Ooh. Nice design. Okay, well that's worrying. Our Starbase should win this though, especially with the Corvette's help. Only just though. Okay, so that's a worry. They're going to return. The father the power is I th think he said he was going to return, and I only just skimmed it. Yeah, in 15 years they're going to return. We need a much bigger fleet by then. Good to know. Finally, we've learned how to make gene clinics. So declining healthcare has finally been removed. It was there for a very, very long time. It wasn't exactly great. Yeah, we're still suffering from just not having many pops. We only have 47 pops at this point. It's been a very long time. Also, our military isn't really increasing, and we have a neighbor who hates us because, you know, we are fanatically xenophobic, and apparently they're xenophobic as well. So together, it's just a big old bundle of hate, really. So at this point, I think it's a good time to talk about the changes they've made to minor artifacts. Rather than just getting them in chunks throughout the game, we now also get them over time from specific locations. For instance, when you finish off one of these lovely archaeology sites, there's a chance it will leave a little minor artifact resource. So now if I put a mining station above this, I'll be getting one minor artifact per month, and with that, everything's a little bit more expensive. As you can see, the sell to private collectors is now 50, but I am getting two per month, so I can keep on doing that over and over again, which I have been. But also, we can get these random techs. So that's a society tech. There we go, ancient rampart, which is a starbase item, and this is one of the Archeo Studies Sciences. So we really, really want to get as many of these done as possible because some of these are really powerful, apparently. I would actually love that at the moment, so I am going to grab that straight away because we have an enemy over there. I am building a bastion, so it makes sense. I want to put that there. Oh, dear. We found MSI. Or at least... Van Conta. Oh no, they're not right next to us, are they? Maybe that always happens. Oh, poop. They attack us when it's dead, because they're an advanced start, and honestly... Does lose a scientist? But why? Why would that happen? Why does that happen to Lathrix? Not happy. If MSI is there. If that's them, we're just... Dead. I mean, we do get the plus 15% damage to superior enemies, but still... Oh, that's interesting. So the Ancient Rampart goes on the Modules section. It increases the platform cap. Okay, we also just fought off the Deck Collectors again. This is pretty easy. I've managed to add a, a gun battery to our main Starbase here. And we had enough fleet power to just remove them. So we're nice and safe still. Then we said, we'll eventually win through Warfare. Which I'm hoping will eventually come true. We're still so behind. We only have 74 people at this point. That is horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. The weirdest thing I've also found out is this. The Ancient Rampart is actually a module, not a building on a starbase. And it adds extra defense platforms, which is pretty cool. So we build one over here as well. So we're probably going to go very heavy into our defense platforms this run. 
because honestly we just need to protect ourselves. So I'm kind of, it's kind of annoying I went with Supremacy. I probably should have gone with the defensive version instead. We'll probably end up going with both by the end. We need to just be very protective. I'm actually starting to think that maybe one way to play this would have been Inwards Perfection. I think that would have been a really good option for this particular origin. It's just such a nice guaranteed start. Ah, how strange are the workings of the universe, that we should come into contact with one another again, after all that has transpired, but never fear, on behalf of the board, Minamar Specialized Industries stands ready to assist you again. Of course, we cannot simply overlook the damages incurred to company property. Our collection agents will no doubt be in contact with you soon if they haven't done so already. We hope we will be able to reach an amicable settlement. We live in such interesting times, don't you think? Allow me to be the first to congratulate you on the incredible progress your people have made. We look forward to testing how much you've grown. <laughs> Worrying. Oh no. Okay, well that's gonna be a problem, isn't it? When are the debt collectors getting back on a side note? Because I want to move my fleets over there. You know what? I'm going to build a second starbase there. It's going to be just a shipyard, and we just need to get stuff in this system as soon as possible. When we first made contact with them, we marveled at the speed which they deciphered our language. We now understand why. Oh, so these are the Broken Shackles Empire. When our former masters tried to bend us, they kidnapped our people. Some of these unfortunates wound up on an MSI ship. To their lasting credit, along with the other indentured assets on board, they mutinied, crashing onto an uninhabited planet. Okay. Nice. Stars nice chunk of unity there. Charted. We found our first pre-FTL civilization. I'm so glad I ramped up how many there were, because we've only managed to find one so far. Admittedly, we haven't expanded as fast as I'd hoped just because resources are so limited with this origin. It is unbelievably slow doing anything, but still, we found one. And because of that, we can do diplomacy with them. Look, they're invisible. Okay, so currently in the Bronze Age, we're going to send in a spy because I would love to uplift them. Would love it a lot. We're going to be nice to them, remember? We trust and love pre-FTLs. We hate everyone else. We've also currently got an observation insight going. We're investing more into... The, okay, so we can speed that up, but we, we get less tech. Right? Yeah, okay, we definitely want to do this. I have no idea what's going to happen there, but that's going to be interesting. So, let's have a look at events. So, in diplomacy currently, we have how aware they are. Okay, diplomacy stage. Obviously, we're not talking to them yet. So, they're currently in the Bronze Age. Oh, yeah, they've got a unique flag. That's interesting. Secret of Fire and the Wheel, that's what they currently have. Reveal our presence, reveal our existence to this pre-FTL civilization, raising their awareness to full. Depending on their current awareness, they will suffer stellar sh Oh, wow, for up to 50 years now. We'll leave it then for now. So I'm hoping events will happen over time with these weird creatures. We're currently doing aggressive observation. I kind of want to do passive, honestly. Um... Can we not just swap it to passive, like I get... Hmm. So where is that? Uh, interference. Interesting. Okay, we're going to change it to active, so we can go with passive. Just because I feel like that fits this empire. We don't want to be too... We want to secretly help them. And then once they're a true FTL civilization, they'll be our, our protectorate forever, and we will protect them against all the threats in the galaxy, while keeping them relatively safe and not really taxing them or anything like that. So that's my thinking, anyway. Our empire share a common enemy, the Dot! <laughs> to protect ourselves against the Dot, we suggest giving their, <clears throat> their operatives access to our classified intel. Sure, we can be friends. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's the Minamar Specialized Industries. I think it's always this empire, so I don't know how that mistake made it through, but okay. It's only a minor one, but it, it gave me a good chuckle. Wait, are you a vassal? Are you... You know what? Let's, let's be friends, eh? Let's be friends. Let's be the best friends that anyone ever has been in the history of the world. Spaceborn life. 
multiple non-verbal communication systems have emerged independently on the planet, with conflicting sets of imagery and hieroglyphs. The inhabitants are still centuries away from forming a dominant language. Interestingly, one of the writing systems has a similar grammatical structure to our own. If the society were to adopt the system, they could become culturally malleable in the future. Uh, no. Their language is their own. So, so I think that was part of this? Maybe- Oh, that's gone down- Oh! Is that because we changed to only active interference? Interesting. We really need more of them. We only have one primitive. I want more! I want more shiny things! I honestly don't know how. But we are currently equal. Oh no, they have the, they have the humans! I want the humans anyway! Ooh, Tomb World! Oh look, they have all of the um, pre-FTL civilizations in their borders. Yeah, we need to go to war with industry, but yes, yeah, somehow we've managed to be equivalent to them. And we've also got a vassal, willingly. The hegemony has joined us because they were just really weak. I think they've been at war, as you can see their borders kind of split. And I'm trying to befriend these as well, because they're very weak. It looks like war has been raging all here, and if we can get a couple of vassals feeding us, we can really fast forward to our war with the industries. Yeah, I'm surprised they're only equivalent to us. Why is that? Like, they should be way stronger than that. I mean, yeah, we have scale and difficulty to, to mid-game, but it's still max difficulty and everything else. Very weird. Very, very weird indeed, because... The Alliance here has superior to us, just for reference, and they're not an advanced star, so I don't know what's happened to them. Honestly. I've got another one of these special buildings, the Ancient Refinery. It gives one of each of the... Ooh, actually, that's much better than I thought it was. So it gives one of each of the rare resource jobs. It also increases all output of those jobs by 25% on the planet. That is insanely good. Okay, this um, agri-world is going to be converted instead then to a refinery world. Definitely. Well, I found out what happened. The silencers over here have been at war with the MSI, so that's a fanatical purifier species and their borders connect over here. They are now superior, so that's their big threat at the moment, so I'm just continually upgrading this really weird station. I don't think it's a smart choice just spamming these ancient ramparts, but it is a cool concept. I think it's improving the whole points of the defense plow. Okay, we're going to do a silly test right now. We're going to remove one of these and see if the hull goes down on that. I, I know there's another way of doing it, but I don't really care. Blink. Okay, good. It does work out. Okay, so the anchor ramparts are definitely buffing the defense platforms. I knew they would, but there's a little voice in the back of my head like, But what if you're wrong, Lathrix? You are such a dumb person. Oh, no. We've accidentally built, well, not accidentally, one of our people have built pyramids. Notice one pyramid on the world. So, we should probably remove that, though that does mean killing one of their pops, and we really want to be nice to them. I... am going to remove the pyramid. Sorry, person who we just killed to do that. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, uh, how's the espionage going? Takes a while, doesn't it? Oh, I guess I did just lose some, didn't I, because of that event. Darn it. Yeah, I really want to do that one soon. Oh, I'm not allowed to at the moment. Okay, so policies, pre-FTL enlightenment. Oh. So I can't enlighten them, but they will slowly raise themselves. Okay, so I've made a mistake there, going fanatic... Xenophobe. Um, can we embrace one of these? And xenophobe and militarist, authoritarian. So if I embrace this, okay. Now we are fanatic authoritarian. There we go. Okay, problem averted. And let's plant some advanced knowledge. Faculty. Of Archeo Studies. Archeo engineers turn consumer goods into research points. If built on a relic world, which I'm about to, research speed Archeo Studies plus 50%. Whoa. Minor art. And they also generate minor artifacts. Empire modifier plus. Okay, that is really, really cool. Empire limit one, so obviously we're building it here. This was again from one of the myriad of um, archaeology sites we've got in our territory. 
We're a big old blob, aren't we? Attacking enemy vessels. Okay, so a few things. First of all, we've just got cloaking, which is going to be really interesting, especially on our science vessels. And I believe it also works on our infiltration, right? Ooh, pretty. The disappointment is heavy. As a company specialising in the enlightenment of less developed civilizations, we pride ourselves in our expertise, yet it has become abundantly clear that we have failed to impart some basic lessons. Rather than attacking others without cause, you alone must bear the responsibility for your failures. You are clearly in need of additional guidance. Let us teach you how to repay a debt. A vile enemy has declared war on us. I mean, we won't, we won't win this, but... Okay, can all fleets please get your butts over there? That would be fantastic. You two. Really, we're just going to try and defend ourselves more than anything else. We've just started to go into unyielding, but sadly it'll be 38 months before we get the big bonus, that, which is 33% hull points and damage to our starbase. Thankfully, the only way they can really get through is through there. They really want Sol. They're currently only equivalent to us again. I'm, again, I'm not sure what's going on with that, because the nation here is superior, so is the Alliance. I don't know what's going on with them specifically. Maybe it is just part of the story pack, I'm not too sure. Half their fleets just went into over here, the other half are over here, so we've ambushed them. Glorious. That was a fantastic start to this war. Now, one thing I noticed, which is a bit worrying, is we can't actually status quo this. We're either going to win, or we're going to lose. And that is it. Now, I'm hoping my, my allies will send me some fleets, if they can actually get to us, which I'm now realising they can't. <laughs> well, that's just great. Yeah, them splitting up their forces just completely undone them. They have around about 6k over here. And our star base has been upgraded, and, and honestly, it's now far stronger thanks to unyielding as well. So that's going to be able to weather that storm. And over here, we've just been able to brush aside their military, and we're now landing on their worlds. Oh, MSI, you stupid, stupid people. Look at you in your silly hat. No, no, I am jealous of the silly hat. It's very dapper. I want one. Vessels upgraded. Attacking enemy vessels. I need the star base. I need to finally get somewhere to heal. Ooh. Okay, so insight breakthrough imminent. Uh, insight breakthrough imminent. We have gathered enough information to create an insight technology to explore further. The next time we have an observation event that would advance our insights, we will gain a new research option. Okay, so that's finally that finished over here. Yeah, we need to um, save up some more influence as well. I really want to make a claim on any of these worlds which have an observation post. Obviously, I want Sol more than anything because that's funny. But yeah, need to stop expanding for a while till we can save up uh, 350 influence. We have helped them update themselves a little bit better. Update themselves? Upgrade themselves a little bit. Okay, so... They're getting close to the next level. I'm going to just spam this every time I can. We will uplift this single system I have. Enemy assets. Planetary invasion commenced. All systems will belong to the Tortillion. Tortillion, a name you can trust. So we ended up getting forced out of their territory because we got ambushed when we entered this system. Turns out their other forces came back, and because it was a nebula, I couldn't see anything in the system. So I jumped in, expecting just a star base, maybe a small fleet, and it had like 8k fleet power there as well. My fleets have already returned, they just need to heal up, and then they'll go back to war. We've also built a new fleet in the meantime. Thankfully, our alloy production is clearly superior to theirs. Teddy invasion commenced. Ground invasion force has seized a planet. Okay, there goes their home system. That's too small to deal with. Oh, there's too many stations behind me, isn't there? Okay, we need to clear out all this. Otherwise, they're going to keep respawning there. Then we'll go after Sol, since I have made a claim. I think once I've grabbed Sol and grabbed all these worlds, we should be able to get a victory. That's going to be such a big deal. The MSI are going to start paying me. 
They are now giving off radio signals. They have entered the machine age. Ancient Driller Drones. That's weird, it's a new type of strike craft which has armor penetration rather than shield penetration and does less damage versus shields. I mean, that's really cool. A war has broken out on the planet. In recent years, certain factions on the planet have managed to accrue enough wealth to monopolize the means of production. In turn, others revolted against the growing inequity. Now an all-out class war has broken out. It is a dark time for the planet. The war is over, the oppressive powers steamrolled the revolutionaries. Well, this is horrendous. We just lost a war against our neighbours, though, the Alliance, because they have a super vassal, apparently. I couldn't have even fought it. Um, I just had to give in straight away. They had overwhelming fleet power against us. They were instantly in our systems, and I've lost one of our worlds because of that. I will get it back, of course, in time. Oh, that's really annoying. I will get it back in time after this war, which we're currently fighting, is over. Because remember, once we have the MSI, we also have their tributary. They'll both join us at the same time. That will make us so much more powerful. I'm so sorry to our people. There is nothing I could have done there. As soon as the war started, it was just instantly, yeah, that's just over. Oh, somehow it managed to happen. Greetings! You have no doubt taken note of our ascent from humble beginnings, just as we have taken note of your starbase or orbiting our star. We understand that this, this starbase represents some hypothetical claim on the system. We ask only that you relinquish this hold on our space, ceding the starbase to the beings who have called the... Yeah, sure, of course. We'll be not... Wow, minus 200 influence? I mean, I do want to give it to them, but... I didn't expect it to be so expensive. There we go, we'll protect them forever, and hopefully we'll uh, make them our vassal as soon as this war is over, which should hopefully be very soon. So a really weird thing, we don't actually own this yet, but there's currently a infection going on in this planet, a zoonotic plague. So we're providing aid to them, but it's not really ours yet. It's very odd. Very, very odd. Debt extinguished. Even before we reached the stars, we knew we were not alone. For centuries, the Minamar Specialized Industries has loomed over us. First as a mentor, then as an oppressor, and finally as a fallen tyrant. We should celebrate, and then perhaps... We should lay down our weapons and finally rest. Free from strife, plus 30% monthly units. Wait, is that forever? Whoa, that's a huge bonus if you manage to get to this position. So now we... Oh, and I got an achievement with interest. Oh, look how unhappy they are with us. Shame. Shamey, shame, shame, shame. You're never going to be loyal to me annoyingly because we are xenophobic and we don't really like any of you. Actually, maybe we can befriend you, you know? Yeah, maybe we can make you our bestest friend. But the problem is, we may have a rebellion on our hands because, yeah, they really, really do hate us. But hopefully over time, as we get some trust with them and everything else, maybe we can at least make you loyal. You, I'm basically strangling at the moment, so I can stop doing that. Actually, you're really weak. I don't really care about you. You wanted to join us, right? Oh, so the annoying thing is, I need to get shared burdens, and I can't get that for ages. Oh yeah, now we're going to have positive branch offices, aren't we? No, we're not going to form branch offices of you. I'll just guarantee your independence and protect you, not as a true vassal for a while. Okay, and now we do have two observation posts, one of which is Sol. Hello, Earth. Oh, Tomb World Earth. And the humans are high, apparently. Oh dear. Well. That's that. Oh, once again, the language stuff's happening. So, once again, their language is their own. It's interesting, they actually do have an early space station, but then only three people. So, at some point, they must have nuked themselves.
I wonder if that actually happened as an event, or that's just how we found them at the start of the game. I don't really know. Our efforts to help prevent the spread of disease on the planet have not gone unnoticed. The local population has begun to speak of angels, enlightened beings who have appeared among them to offer comfort and deliverance. See, we're nice! From our primitives, you now have this, compact living. Empire size effect, minus 5%, available envoys, plus 0.5. I assume once we get to a whole one, we'll have a single whole new envoy, rather than just parts of one. That's lovely, it's actually a really nice effect. What? Wow, that is unfortunate. So the plague has won. On the world, winds whisper across the empty plains. Dwellings that once housed whole families now stand lifeless and forlorn. The planet's population has been eliminated. At long last, the plague has run its course. Well, that was unfortunate. Written in the stars. On Sol, the inhabitants are using crudely carved imagery to express and share ideas. Samples documented by our researchers indicate that the inhabitants have an awareness of celestial bodies beyond their own planet and have even begun to document constellations. Their early attempts at charting the stars are fairly accurate for such a young civilization, but not so much that they couldn't be improved should we wish to drop some hints. No, we're going to continue to be hands off on what's left of humanity. Oh, another one with available envoys plus 0.25. Lovely. So that's interesting. You can order science ships to aid in cloaking detection. And that's actually a good point. None of my ships currently have any form of cloaking detection. I don't know if enemy ships are using it. Well, my allies don't seem to be all that much, which is good. Maybe we should start using it. It would allow us to get through these systems even if the uh, borders are blocked, which is good. Am I blocked when they closed? There's a couple of Gaia worlds here. There's one there, I think there's one over here, which we can soon actually inhabit since we are currently doing the, um, the special archaeology site for that. Where is it? Oh, it's all the way over here, isn't it? Once Ancient Tomb is done... That we can grab those without causing war. So we should get my ships down here anyway. Start clearing out all of this. There is just so much space we're not currently using. There's also the Ether Drake, which I really should start attacking soon, honestly. Because that gives me a really, really powerful relic. And yeah, we should be able to do that really soon, in fact. Ancient Macro Batteries. These cannons of gargantuan size deliver relatively slow but devastating projectiles and can fire pretty much anything, from scrap metal to asteroid chunks. Extra shield damage, less armor damage. Not the highest damage, though. Um, uh, yeah, actual raw damage. Still, though, very cool. Arco Engineers. Combining proven archaic technology with contemporary engineering will give us a timeless advantage. Interesting. Increased weapon damage. That would also increase the damage of those really weird strike craft by 33%, which is pretty impressive. Unlocks additional effects for ancient ship components and buildings. We do have quite a lot of the buildings as well. Okay, for now, Shared Destiny. Then that. Then Defender of the Galaxy. And I don't really know. So that's what we're going with right now. I'm trying to get strong enough to peacefully vassalize the despoilers over here. But it's difficult. <laughs> With the game cheating in terms of tech and just sheer power level, yeah, it is a tad difficult. Once I upgrade these, I'm going after the Ether Drake. They should all now have the improved lasers. Ancient Pulse Armor. Armor Shield. Wow, okay, so it's armor and shields, and it also increases shield regen. Now that looks very interesting. Technology secured. So, oh. I was hoping the strike craft would have their own unique model, but no, it looks like we're just using the regular reptile one, which is fine. But for some reason I expected it to be a bit weirder. 
And there goes the Ether Drake, giving us a nice chunk of influence as well. Of course, we'll encourage that. And that gives us access to the Ether Drake Trophy. Once activated, plus 10% happiness, plus 10 stability to all of our planets. Obviously, that is absurdly good. Now, is there any others within range of us? I guess there is this one. I believe that um, destroying the main hub there gives you that little mini relic, so we may as well, since we're right here anyway. There we go. We've now got the Surveyor. Passive, sensor range, plus one. Meh, I mean, it's better than nothing, isn't it? So let's deal with all of these. Actually, what else I can finally do is use cloaking for something. Since once they're cloaked, the big benefit is they can go and survey systems without worry. If we got that earlier, I think it would have been a lot more useful. And of course, we can put our cloaks on our normal ships as well, if we so desire. At the moment, I've not really gone with that, but once we upgrade everything, we certainly can. That'll be interesting during the um, Endgame Crisis, actually, now I think about it. Be very interesting. That was interesting. An asteroid was heading towards Sol. We destroyed it before it ended up causing damage. And it caused them to become a little bit more aware of us. We are currently at war because my allies wanted to go to war, but I'm actually using this opportunity to take back the world that was once taken from us, in addition to all of the systems nearby. Wow, they are being incredibly mean to our people. I didn't realise they were that evil. Oh, they're xenophiles. I honestly thought they were xenophiles. Okay, well then. I'm going to do horrible things to your populations. Most in the form of orbital bombardment. Human explorers on Sol have discovered a previously unknown species of molluscoid. On its own, each of these creatures barely qualifies as sapiens. However, when two or more are joined through physical contact, they form a semi-conscious node. Theoretically, these nodes should be capable of an exponential growth in cognitive power. Simply put, the people of Sol have stumbled onto a biological thinking machine. Given time, this discovery could herald the advent of an organic singularity. Ooh, promote it! I have no idea what this is going to do. Maybe it'll be terrible for humans, but I'm doing the thing. Technology secured. Interesting. The nodal consciousness has reorganised much of the planet's agricultural production, increasing crop yields and raising standards of living. Already, the people are relinquishing their decision-making to the biological machine. Yeah, that's not going to go bad. Whoops, our cloak broke there because, yeah, turns out fallen empires... They can pretty much detect our stealth. The camera's being really glitchy as well. It's a really weird thing. Every time I try and zoom in, it throws me at, like to the side for some reason. It's the weirdest bug. Interface with the nodal consciousness on Sol is reaching a saturation point. All bureaucratic decisions have been delegated to the organic hive mind, and the results are nothing short of spectacular. The planet's economy is booming, and the people have achieved a standard of life that would have been unthinkable even a generation ago. But they're just in the Bronze Age. Okay, we continue then, I guess. They've became a little bit more aware of us, it seems. Should I start uplifting them? No, I need the influence for uh, deal making with all my vassals at the moment. Sublight speed loss from cloaking, minus 50%, and again, more envoy stuff. So this is, I believe, from that event that just happened. Maybe. It can be a bit hard to tell exactly where you're getting them from sometimes. That is one thing I will note. At least, according to me, the person who misses obvious stuff all the time. Our work to promote the singularity on Sol is already paying dividends. By now- I said that so weirdly then. By now, the planet is almost entirely networked, with much of the day-to-day decision-making given over to the nodal consciousness. However, in an effort to streamline processes, certain basic am amenities have been eliminated, and it is growing increasingly clear to the planet's people that their molluscoid machine may have its own designs. I, for one, think that the mollusk- the molluscoid deserves happiness too. That's my rationale. That and I just really want to see how this all ends up. 
That wasn't stormy until just now. The singularity has dawned on Sol. Within hours of its ascension, the hive mind had absorbed more than 90% of the planet's population, and the few individuals who remain are already being hunted down. We stand witness to the birth of a singular consciousness. Yay! The humans are still there, they're just now part of the hive mind. I mean, that was cool. And it's somehow caused the storm, but it's cool. Unless it's just a normal space storm and I missed the event? No. I believe it's somehow caused the storm, which is very worrying. Ancient Nano Missile Launcher. Sorry, Cloud Launcher. Particle charges, once stabilized thanks to ancient technology, allow us to create swarms of tiny missiles that still carry a respectable payload. They should be able to overwhelm most point defense systems. Okay, so it's just a version of the swarm missiles, the normal ones. The go through shields and armor. Really, really short cooldown. Oh, that is such a fun sounding weapon. Only size small though. Okay, well for now I need this, but hopefully I'll be able to uh, research that again in the future. Very interesting. So I'm checking out this ancient pulse armor. It is really interesting. So you're losing quite a bit of armor and you are losing a lot of shield, but obviously then you get both, which is the main point there. It's also a bit more expensive on alloys and of course it also does cost the um, minor artifacts. I don't really know if it's worth it or not, to be completely honest. It is interesting though, and it even has less daily shield regen than the regular shields. I don't know, maybe if you got this really early, it'd be a lot, be a lot better similar to the uh, Driller Drones. Not sure, which I am still using by the way, just because I like using them. Once I get those other missiles, that's what I'll be using there as well. Oh, I don't know which one I want to pick now. I actually have access to pretty much every single ascension, even though we are super light with this. Which is something to consider. So, mind over matter, we'd very quickly gain access to the ability to go into the Shroud and form a Covenant. So that's fantastic. Obviously, that's ridiculously powerful. We can also supercharge our worlds. Synthetic evolution would be good. It would allow us to consolidate all the different populations we have. All of these worlds be completely hab um, completely habitable. And it would just be a nice, easy power bump. The flesh is weak. It's just easier than that, but not as powerful in my eyes. Uh, I really don't know which one to pick. I'm leaning towards synths, since we have already done the genetic one recently with the hive mind we played during the super run, and I went with, I think I went with psychic with the one system challenge? I think synths are right to go. To keep things interesting, we're gonna be synths. I can't remember being synths since they changed how it all worked, so I think that's definitely the right call. While all the sentient population of Sol belongs to an organic consciousness, the planet is home to several different hives. These hives are isolated collections of drones and are competing with each other for resources. Occasionally, conflict erupts between two groups and can sometimes escalate to total war. We are currently witnessing an all-out assault on a hive's capital, and it is a gruesome business. The efficiency of the drones, unhindered by empathy, would make any general proud. The defenders are quickly losing ground, but by our estimations, they should hold for a few more days. Yet, moments later, all fighting ceases, as the defenders join forces with their opponents and begin dismantling their capital for anything of value. It appears they have been completely and instantly assimilated into the network of the attacking hive. Did they just eat a consciousness? Okay, another one of the Arca studies. Ship Aura Titan, plus five chance to evade. I mean, that's pretty nice. That's interesting. Uh, there's a little addition to the head over here. Summon a small Fallen Empire fleet. That's what it's always been. Every activation will increase the size of the fleet. I'm actually waiting right now because I'm trying to get the Rubricator because we do desperately need some more minor artifacts. And yeah. That's going to take precedence, I think. Hey there, Shard. How you doing? Colonization in progress. Let's see if the rubricator has been changed recently by all the different um, changes to the artifacts. Okay, obviously we encourage that. And 
Rubric to create 500. Okay, that makes sense. Ooh. Our Arcology weapon damage is increased by 15%. Archaeotech. Archaeotech. I don't know how to pronounce that still. We do want those minor artifacts, but that extra 10% stability is so good. No, I do really need the minor artifacts at the moment. Though I'm also tempted to start using this one on cooldown because of the increased size of the fleet. Uh, every time you use this now, it increases the size of the full Empire fleet you get, which is just really fun. I'm only going to be able to use it a couple of times, though. The uh, Endgame Crisis is arriving soon. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. So the first fleet is 11k, which is one battlecruiser and three escorts. The Confederated Sons has been at war with the Despoilers, and because of that, the Despoilers have flocked to us for protection, of course. With our hatred of Zeno, we're going to be just siphoning off all their resources for our own gain, but still, in return, we will defend our livestock. You're really strong. I kind of wish I had the ability to make a federation of you, but sadly, all of my stuff is already taken up now. The right to leave. Our observation of Sol proceeds, and we have recently discovered what we first mistook as rogue drones. These individuals live in the periphery of the local hive settlements, and seem to have acquired partial, if not full, autonomy. They have entirely disconnected from the collective, and some even seem to enjoy leisurely moments. Comfortable doing nothing. They however appear to still depend on the Hive for resources, and are basically trading with the Collective. Why the Hive has not seen fit to exterminate these rogues... ...remains a mystery. Okay. Also, I'm getting really tired at the moment, and reading is becoming more and more difficult. So, I could, of course, be giving this, um, some tech, but I've been, I'm, I'm enjoying just seeing what's happening with it at the moment, so I'm just, I've just been leaving it. So at this moment, I've got to be honest, it feels like I'm 10 years behind where I normally am at this point, and that's kind of great, because that's, to me, what the origin should really feel like. I know it's a weird thing to say, oh, I'm doing quite badly, whoa, fantastic, but honestly, the whole point of this origin, in my opinion, is the whole point you are starting late. You are not getting everything at the start, you are fighting for every inch of territory within the galaxy, and you're not put in a good position because you were late to the galactic scene. And it feels like it. We have 20 years now until the endgame crisis arrive, and in previous runs I have been in such a stronger position than I am currently. I'm not in a super weak position, because we have MSI and a lot of uh, vassals, we're actually okay. I'm not confident, but I'm not super worried either. It's somewhere in between. And because we're getting stuff so light though, I'm not really going to go down the route of mega structure. so we're going to have a lot of just base stuff, and we also have a really weird set of ascensions. I was forced to get to Eternal Vigilance quite early just to protect myself, which did pay off twice. Um, still not sure if it's a great choice, but still. I'm going to have to get Defender of the Galaxy next. No, because... As soon as we get Ascension Theory randomly, which we should do soon enough, we'll get two of them, so I will probably still go with the Archeo Engineers. I don't know if this is a good uh, Ascension perk or not. Again, I am playing mostly spoiler-free, but it just seems really fun. So that, and then Defender of the Galaxy. Yeah, we're not really going with much stuff, honestly. Maybe I should focus even more on our economy, really go heavily into alloys at the moment. It's a bit of a mixed bag, as you can see, our worlds are really bizarre. And I should have specialized them better. Yeah, I don't really know what to do next, honestly. This may be one of those runs where we lose. To be completely honest, this may be a losing run because of how early we've set our endgame crisis. Okay, let's go full on into Navy, uh, Navy capacity, though. We are really struggling with that. Let's make sure to start upgrading all of our stuff and just hope for the best. Yeah, somewhat worried. I mean, our fleets are looking alright, but not good enough yet. I don't know what type of weapons to specialize in, that's the other big problem. We didn't manage to get Cloud Lightning, I simply didn't find any anywhere in time, which was a problem. We're on random, so it could be absolutely anything, but we need to start focusing. I could go Kinetic, because then that's going to be good versus the Contingency and the Unbidden. If we go down the route of energy, we have Archimitters, which is decent against everything, but, but, but then we of course go into, into Tachyon Lancers, which are specifically effective against the Scourge. Sorry, I'm waffling too much, it's still really light right now, and I'm trying to 
plan my next move. Right now, though, we are upgrading our species into synths. Finally, we're also super light with that, but that will give us a serious bonus. I've set, I've sent some colony ships to grab all of these worlds, so those will be ours as well. So we are going to continue to power up, but it is just so light, we're not going to get all that much from those worlds. But still, that's just what we're doing right now. Well, this empire over here has been bullied by the Orange Empires a lot. As you can see, they've encroached on their territory over and over again. They keep going to war, and because of that, I am going to be able to get them as a vassal. Or not. You just said you'd accept that. That keeps happening. That's happened twice now in this run. I don't quite know what's going on. They accept here. They're very much accepting, so there's no real chance they're going to suddenly change their, their level in time. And this costs influence, and then they just randomly say no. Is it just a random chance that occasionally will happen? Spaceball. There we go, that's on the accepted. The exact same thing though. That is really, really weird. I am very confused. Ah, probably should have waited a little bit before I started Space the, um... Okay, so once again, I haven't played Synth really since all the changes to the Essential Perks. I didn't realise the next one was the special project cost, minus 50% because I should have just waited and then did this. I think this will affect it retroactively. Yeah. Uh, no. Wow, that was dumb. That's a lot of tech wasted then. I didn't know that. Should have read them all, really, shouldn't I? I know this one's amazing. Robot output plus 10%, less amenities usage, extra modification points. Technologies. Oh my god, please, please be the unbidden. This thing looks awesome. Ancient Saturator Artillery. Massive damage, massive range, as you'd expect from a size X. 150% extra shield damage, 25% extra hull. Oh, that's only going to be useful versus the Unbidden, though. Against the other two, they just... The Scourge is armor, and the, and the Contingency has armor. That wouldn't be great. Huh. We can insult people and gain benefits from it. That's interesting. But, okay, let's unlock that first, because that just looks really bloody cool. Ancient Suppression Field. Shield hardening is built in, which is great. Shield hit points plus five, uh, 750. Loads of shield regen. Projected farther than the regular shields, the suspension field technology uses ancient artifacts to slow time at the point of impact to afford the shields a longer opportunity to spell the incoming attack's energy. And then, once again, we have these really cool missiles, which I just love the look of. Full shield penetration, full arm penetration, extra hull damage, and it is about overwhelming the target. These are what my battleships will use from now on. Oh no, you're worried that we're robots. Haha, <laughs> but we are also the chosen ones, so you don't actually mind as much as you might imagine. Anyway, yeah, our people are now synths. I am going to wait a little bit, though, until we have at least this one over here, the solid state actuators, which will give us more points to spend. We get even more later on, but I may as well, I may as well wait until that, because it's going to be very expensive otherwise. Oh, I just thought, actually, modify species. Maybe that wasn't the same as the synthetic project I was waffling on about earlier. I'm going to leave that in, because it shows where my mind is right now, that being all over the place. We're at war because of our allies once again. I doubt this Bastion's going to stand, but let's see. Does have a lot of point defense at least. The enemy is seemingly using a lot of strike craft. Wow, never mind. Eternal Vigilance. Under attack. Oh, they split. That's what happened there. Destruction complete. Wow, utterly obliterated. I mean, we are turtles at the end of the day. Of course we can protect ourselves in this way. My fleets are moving anyway to protect. Uh, the other fleet's moving over there. Sadly, I can't have my own. Oh, we're already winning. You only wanted one system. Is that really all you wanted? How do we have... Uh, what do we have in that system? Come on, let me actually enter, please. Thank you. There are two worlds... I could grab them, couldn't I? Weaken them even further. What I need to do is go to war with this empire. Okay, we're going to end it here, so the cooldown's on as fast as possible. Next time the cooldown is off, the truce is off, I'm going to war myself to vassalize the alliance. If that works, the other alliance, the citizen alliance, will join us as well, and then we have basically the galactic core as our own. This cheeky little bugger was trying to get through our system all cloak-like. Well, too bad for you, now we can see you. 
but good for you. Um, we're actually friends with your empire, so no consequences. Just have fun. That was it. Next full playthrough, I promise I'm going to focus on the cloaking so much. I just didn't this run, and that's on me. Decided since we became synthetic, I am now materialist. We've gone through a whole lot of different ethics through this run. Normally I don't even swap once, I've swapped twice now. So now we are materialist, xenophobic, and authoritarian. All glory to our tech speed. Cons Ecosystem takeover. The human society on Sol 3, which as we know is now a hive mind, have recently started settling new regions of the planet. The local flora and fauna, initially vastly different from what can be found in the settled territory, are being completely taken over by the Collective, who is taking a radical but methodical approach to regulating the local ecosystem. Certain animal species are ruthlessly exterminated, only to be replaced by others, whilst invasive vegetables choke out the life of the indigenous trees. The natives' ecological mastery is remarkable, yet they cannot avoid certain setbacks in areas of unusual climate. Where the introduced life forms cannot survive long, we believe that they shall soon find a way around these obstacles, and eventually the whole world will be uniform, presenting optimal, optimal <laughs> conditions for the collective to thrive in. Fascinate. Ooh, actually, I would like more progress, please. Thank you. Neat. I'm also trying to give them tech now as well. Since we're getting towards the end of the game, I would like to uplift them past Bronze Age at very least. Like we did with our allies over here who love us. Ah, oh, who's a happy little feudal empire? Yeah, you are. When it comes to tracking and shooting down missiles, these antique batteries are the best of the best, making use of a predictive algorithm written in long forgotten code to weave a fiery defensive web. Energy, point defense, and of course, arcology. Hmm, armor penetration, armor damage. Which is an interesting combo there. No shield damage. That is interesting indeed. Okay, well, we'll unlock it. Really hope I get Ascension Theory soon. I want to make sure I have Defender of the Galaxy and the other one. So, I might have to make a choice which one to definitely get soon. And then just risk it and hope for the best we get the second. So we should probably make sure to get Defender of the Galaxy. But I really want the other one because it seems a lot more fun. Ancient Ruination Glare. Tremendous medium-range firepower will enable our Titans to break through enemy lines. These ancient cannons were once the ruination upon which a galactic empire was built. Interesting. Yeah, it is shorter range than the normal super weapon that they carry. And again, no shield damage. Against, um... I'm really, really hoping we face off against the... Scourge at this point. Actually, no, because all the other stuff has been kinetic, hasn't it? I don't know who I want to fight. The problem is I'm not doing any repeatable, so I'm not sure what I'm upgrading. I'm really wasting my relic activations, but I just wanted to test this. So there we go. There's the second of the Fallen Empire fleets to join us. This time it is literally double the first. I wonder if it keeps on doubling or just keeps on adding a single battleship and three of the escorts. Construction complete. Only time will tell. Okay, so Lathrex has been done, and he has in fact gone with the Archeo Engineers. I don't know if this is a good choice at all, let alone choosing it over Defender of the Galaxy first. So, if we take a look then, if you look at the components, you can see there are now extra bonuses. From Archeo Engineers, plus 450 shield points. In fact, that's made me really want to use this, the Ancient Suspension Fields. These increase your shield hardening on your ship. And for those who don't know, shield hardening essentially means if something would normally bypass shield, shields, they instead hit a certain percentage on the shields instead, based on your shield hardening level. Now, I believe that stacks. So if I went like this, that's gonna be 30-60% right there, so if you have all of them, which would make it way too expensive by the way, that's a lot of shield hardening, which means that's gonna counter pretty much anything, well, it's gonna force pretty much everything to hit the shields, which will be great. The Contingency does like its Strikecraft, for instance, and the Scourge love to bypass shields with Strikecraft and missiles and everything else, and, well, the Unbidden are countered by shields. So we could go with this. That's if the shield hardening stacks. I cannot get confirmation if that is true. Everyone who I've asked doesn't know. So I'm gonna assume it does and hope for the best there. Then as for weapons, we could now go with this, because I wanted to go with this, and then go with Kinetic. This would make us good versus the Contingency, utterly brutal versus the Unbidden, and terrible versus the Scourge. Ugh. 
and that's going to make us really expensive as well. Then I'd probably mix a single of the Driller Drones and the Strikecraft. Remember, we do get a plus 33% bonus now to all of these ancient weapons, though I think that's only applied... Um, it's not being applied right now here. That's being applied once it's actually created in the overworld. I just don't know. I think that would be interesting, at least. How much power usage is this? So we could go with a single one of those there. Yeah, just, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to set up these ships. Maybe something like that, just really risk it and just go with the full-on artillery. I haven't gone down the kinetic route in ages, and that seems loads of fun. So, strike craft, kinetic, shields. Maybe. Yet another new weapon. This high-energy weapon causes brutal micro-collapsing events on impact, generating tremendous heat and force inside its target's armor. Utterly obliterates armor, utterly obliterates. Oh no, it's got armor penetration and armor damage. It's such a weird combo of things. I mean, it makes sense, but still. It's just weird. Please, please give me Ascension Theory. I need this before the endgame crisis. We have ten years. We can do it. Ancient Shield Overcharger increases shield hit points, shield hardening by a lot. Defense Platform Modifier plus shield hit points, shield hardening plus 25%. Okay, so it's better on the star base than the defense platform. Interesting. Still cool, though. So, something I didn't even look at is the new pre-FDL stances over here. Basically options to decide how the galaxy deals with them. And the bonuses they're in. Do we seriously not have a galactic council? This is a weird galaxy. Yeah, so one thing I wasn't really focusing on is this. So the ancient refineries are now increasing all of the resources by 40%. And that's because of the change to the engineer. So if we go over to our relic world, which is somewhere... There we are. I can't remember the actual stats for this, so this doesn't help. Maybe it's better, maybe it's not. I can't remember. So what I've done, because it's so expensive, I've split our ships into two. Essentially, there's this version, which uses loads of the Arcology stuff, which is just a lot more powerful. Then we have the lesser versions, which are only using the artillery, so they're a lot cheaper in terms of minor artifacts, so we can keep on making these, even when we can't afford the full setup. And that's how it is. This one, this one technically does more damage until they're created, and again, then the stats actually apply. Devolving Beam, a colossal mind-wiping cannon which unleashes a planet-wide wave of energy, returning most sentient life into a pre-sapient state. So I should have said sapient life into pre-sapient. Engineers estimate that with additional tuning, it might also be used to wipe clean memory banks and disable robotic units. Wow. Well, that's horrific. I mean, I don't have a, a colossus, but cool. Three years until the Endgame Crisis can possibly spawn in. Every time I can, I'm making one of my Relic-type ships, but when I can't, I now have the no-Relic-type battleship, which, as you can imagine, doesn't use any of the Relic weapons at all, because it turns out getting that many minor artifacts is actually kind of a bother. The difference between the Giga Cannon and the Ancient Artillery is actually kind of absurd. So, plus 50% shield damage, but minus 25% armor, versus plus 150% shield damage and plus 25% hull damage at the cost of a full minus 75% damage against armor. That is really weird. And the range is the same, right? Yeah, the range is the same. Actually, most of the other stats are very, very similar. This one does fire a lot slow. Actually, no, the same speed. Never mind, I just can't read. I'm really hoping it's the Unbidden. I think that might be the only chance we have for this super early crisis. I am restraining, sending my fleets out. I'm so tempted to grab some of the Fallen Empire stuff, but right now we just need to keep building ships. I am building a, a mega shipyard. It's the one mega structure I am building. And just rely on our economy to at least carry us through for the first few years of the, of, of the big fight. Alien topography? Yeah, so now we get one extra district to all non-artificial planets. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Interestingly, the AI really does love its detection arrays. We'll just grab some systems from my Rebellion over here. I didn't really want the systems, that's just how the game works. And yeah, they were all just completely packed full of the detection stuff. Because cloaking is scary, apparently, even if I haven't really touched on it this whole run. Oh my god, how many random worlds did you just throw at me? 
Okay, that's... A lot of worlds with very few people. Okay, you actually have people. Oh, it's far too many of you. Okay, can some of you please be assimilated? There is way too much going on in these worlds. The Mega Shipyard is slowly making its way forward. And why can't I upgrade that? There we go. I've had lots of little bugs like that as well lately. I just can't click things. I have to remove myself either from the game completely. Um, earlier I was trying to colonize the world and it would just not let me, no matter what I did, until I restarted the game. But also just that then. It's only minor little things, but I'm noticing them a bit more frequently than usual. Either way, yeah, so we have the mega shipyard. Our ships are pretty dire, to be honest, but thankfully our economy is holding. Um, after this war over here... I am very likely going to be able to bring the confederated Newton states into our little vassal group as well. Over here, they are currently facing off against the Fallen Empire, so let's see how that goes. If all goes perfectly, we might have two more vassals by the end of these wars. The Endgame Crisis so could arrive at any moment, and honestly, I don't know if I would win right now. We do have Defender of the Galaxy, and if we go up against the Unbidden, we have a really good chance. If it's the Contingency, I think we might be okay. The Scourge, we are in serious trouble. <laughs> Look at this bar. Oh, they like me. No, they don't. Yes, I do. No, they don't. Yes, I do. No, they don't. I have no idea what is going on with this poor empire as it's at war, but it really hate loves me. <laughs> Whoa, that's going out of hand. Yeah, so the machines are uprising against the silencers, which I kind of forgot were even there. They just kept on losing against every other empire and just got stuck in this corner and just really suffered the entire game. The suns are doing great. They're still actually superior to me in terms of their economy. I don't know how, but they're super powerful. Th these were doing really well until I declared war on this empire, started to lose, then the watchers got involved and everything went very, very bad very, very fast. I think they're a war with someone else as well, aren't they? Moral intervention. Wait, are you at war with both of the Fallen Empires? Oh, well that's not great, is it? Why do they hate you so much? I don't think you were a particularly evil empire. You're a divine empire, you're zealots, okay, so that's not great for a lot of the options they choose, but I mean, they haven't picked anything particularly brutal. What did you do? Solar system hardpoint lost. Star system charted. Well, I've swapped over almost all the defense platforms now to kinetics. They are doing a lot of extra bonus damage, and they are still protecting us from the attack of the bulwark. Oh, whoa, maybe not forever. Okay, well, my fleets are on the way anyway, so if they can just hold for a little bit longer. It's a tiny little bit longer. And yes, I know I was going to go to war with these guys, but this empire wouldn't accept the change in terms to not go to war all the time and it's just been a nightmare and the second they could go to war they did it was absolutely horrendous so we're at war again because this empire over here would not accept the change in terms for the whole you know don't drag me into every single war you have and i didn't have the influence for it so i need to save up for over here and it's just become a mess and we're at war again this little empire over here i think is going to stay here till the Station end of time my fleets are on the way but my defense platforms are mowing things down they are now using kinetics so as you can see they just destroy everything since we're doing only kinetic uh, repeatables at the moment Station okay this is the fleet i was terrified of i was hoping my fleets would get here in time but i might end up losing all my defense platforms here construction or not. Never mind. Our, def pl our defense platforms are brutal. Wow. Well done, that's it now. The second the war was over, they joined a federation. Okay. Big old scary orange federation, sure. I think most of them no longer hate me. Yes, that's fine. That's the main empire in that group. That's absolutely fine. The Union, sorry, the Imperium, still no one likes you. So hopefully as soon as the war is over, you'll join me. And now I finally managed to make a deal where you can't drag me into war so we can attack the Alliance next time since we're constantly fighting them anyway. Also, where is the crisis? It's been 10 years now. I think I'm ready as long as it's not the scourge. Locker cleared. It's stupid, but I've done it again. So... Yeah, each time you use the Spiritualist Relic, it's adding one battleship and three of the escorts. 
Not majorly powerful then, really, and a waste of my relic once again. Again, if you got that really early, though, maybe that could have really sorted it. Oh, what is happening here? Plant knowledge. Launch. Costs influence. Instantly stops. I have wasted several hundred influence, I now realise. I just thought I wasn't getting the notification that it's been finishing. Why is that happening? Enlightenment allowed, interference, active, that's fine. None of these have passed, so nothing should be stopping me. The option is available, and it's just taking my influence and not doing anything. Oh, I am genuinely annoyed right now because I was really looking forward to seeing these advance after all the different events they've had and now I'm realizing this just hasn't been working Wow that's annoying after fighting off both the fallen empires and well losing pretty much all of their ships they have now joined us we're making a really, really weird little symbol. Okay, so yeah, that's going to be probably the end of our expansion, except for maybe going to war with the Alliance, but that's just so late now. We're not going to go toward this Federation. They have pretty much equal fleet power to us total, and it would be just a total galactic war, which I'm not really in the mood for right now when still waiting for the crisis. We're now at 20, uh, 20k tech. Again, I feel like I'm 20 years behind where I want to be. Maybe a little bit more even. Our actual economy, though, is doing really well. The economy is doing fantastically. Uh, because of that, we can uh, repair our fleets very quickly, very easily if we lose them. So we should be all right. Mostly because of the whole economy thing. And now at 21k tech, since I am also taking some of their research. We're taking 15% research, 15% base resources from them. Just to make sure that pure peace will always reign in this galaxy, we have now settled with a research agreement and commercial agreement with the Confederated Sons. From our enlightened position over here, peace has been pretty much attained, and the silencers, yeah, they're, they're not going anywhere, they're just completely stuck there at the top of the galaxy. We could get rid of them if we wanted to, we do have a wormhole going through, but I do like their position because if it is the horror of the Scourge as our endgame crisis, I like that there's a buffer here and here. <laughs> to be completely honest, in case they spawn near the top. I do love the constant missiles, just always hitting the enemy from the uh, relic missiles. That is a lot of fun. There's currently a machine uprising one of our vassals, so sadly we have had to take action. Thankfully they did have a uh, gateway in their territory, so we can just jump straight in. And it looks like pretty much everything's already under control. Still waiting for that endgame crisis. Well, I can't give them more knowledge, and apparently I can at least increase their awareness, which really isn't a big deal. How about now? Now will this work, or is this going to be another 20 influences gone? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, pause for a second. Launch operation. On to see if anything else will change. Locker cleared. If you're unable to give them tech because of how far back they are, they are a uh, Bronze Age and they are a hive mind, then it shouldn't accept my influence and it should just stop me at the start. Otherwise, yeah, I just don't know what's going on. I'm sure I gave a Stone Age Empire and a quick test run some stuff, but I have no idea. So there is now an Awakened Empire, just kind of sitting there being angry, and there's also the Grey Tempest, because someone decided to open the Elgates. Gates, thank you to that random empire, whoever you were. Thankfully, we are very, very late for the Grey Tempest, so not too worried there, honestly. If I can just get a couple of the large uh, fleets together, please, we can just go and um, take out the main system, that would be wonderful. You all get your butts over there, please. Vessels. As long as we can grab this system, that's going to be the Tempest threat nullified. Yeah, just way too late in the game for the Tempest. Not a threat in the slightest. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is send one of our science vessels over. Let's see if we can get a Bastion down there as well. Then that way, we have... 
a proper base of operations in the area. One thing I do love about the cloaking is that if there's an enemy in the area, they will still head towards it even if they're unevasive, which means, you know, you don't always have to redo every single command if a single enemy goes through the system. It does make things a lot smoother. So playing tactically, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the Tempest because the Fallen Empire doesn't like it and actually thinks, oh, there's, there's a threat currently in the galaxy and it's leaving borders open for me and not attacking anyone because of this. The Tempest is then under our control and under our keep. Everyone will submit to me as the nominate custodian. In fact, they'll also do it for the Awakened Empire, but this way just guaranteed will be custodian. That way we can start getting all their extra bonuses as well. Oh, if the crisis continues to take this long to arrive. Look at my cheeky, stealthy little science ship over here. Oh, how many colonies were just given to me? Oh, no. That's a lot of colonies. With only seven days to go, I managed to get United Front at the front. There we go. So United Front will increase all damage to end game factions by 20% if it passes. It was between that and the Galactic Mobilization, where I get that special fleet from being the overlord, happy person, and everything else. But I think this will be better, just a flat plus 20% in addition to uh, Defender of the Galaxy. We're gonna really hurt things that appear in our galaxy. Like, really, really hurt them. Also, yes, I still haven't finished building even the Coordination Center at the moment. Now I think about it, why am I not building a Science Nexus? Solar system hardpoint lost. That was a Fallen Empire fleet. So, the Fallen Empire attack to humiliate us. Not the Awakened, the Fallen Empire. Actually, where's the other Fallen Empire now? Think about it, it should be three, shouldn't there? Oh, it's the robot one, that's what I've not heard from them. Wow, they're all really close to each other, like a little line. Anyway, they decided to try and humiliate us. I'm sending in my entire fleet, except for the ones currently defending against the... Grey Tempest, that's their name. And I don't need those soon, because as you can see, my station is also being built. And I've made a claim on their homeworld. So, well done. Sky Temple's about to be horribly, horribly bombarded because apparently all advanced civilizations are the worst and we continue our original ideals because of this. I will become the emperor of everything. No one can ever hurt anyone ever again. The pre-FTL civilizations will be protected. I even managed to pass the whole... Actually, no, oh, no, I didn't pass it, did I? I was going to pass it, but then everything else happened. Oh, I was going to make it so no one could be mean to them anymore. So the exploitation is more evil. Grants access to non-interference policy. Did okay. Yeah, should probably try and get that as well by the end. Anyway, Galactic Defense Force is next though. This will also be the last time I play an Iron Man for these because it's fine, obviously. I like getting the achievements, but my god, I just want to spawn in the endgame crisis. I was gonna... I, mere moments ago, was thinking to myself, I know what I can do, spawn in the Scourge, because they're the ones we're the weakest against, so we'll spawn those in early, because they're just not spawning in for some reason, and everything will be fine. But I can't, can I? I can't use that console command. Missiles and Strikecraft, my favourite things in this game, really. We do so badly against armor. There we go. As soon as the armor uh, breaks, we're instantly killing them, but still. And begin the slow bombardment of their home. I mean, it's their own fault. Also, we just don't care. I just got the achievement, Hear Me Roar, because we've managed to incubate the egg left behind by the Ether Drag, giving us a tiny little hatchling. And that's pretty much it. The pre-FDL hives of Sol 3 have advanced sufficiently in their use of metallurgy to be considered an Iron Age civilization. The tools and weaponry they make use of are becoming more effective, and the proximity of their habitation clusters has become more elaborate. Sorry, the complexity of their habitation clusters. Several distinct mines have now spread to cover most of the planet, and some of their largest clusters are home to nearly a million drones. So, the question is... Will this work? And no, it still will not work. We now have the Galactic Defense Force. 
The battleships we're going to be creating for the Imperial Armada are going to be pretty much just ships which are good versus everything to at least a limited extent. So we have the Cloud Lightning, the Arc Emitters and Strike Craft, so we get through shields all the time and armor most of the time. And then we have a mix of shields and armor with the shield hardening and armor hardening. Although I do need to buy Zero for that. Okay, good, so I can. That's be absolutely fine then. Okay, so that is what our new battleship will look like in our super fleet. Now, what titan should it have, since you should always really use a titan in a fleet this big? Ooh, we could use one of the new weapons. Ah, oh, it's terrible versus shields, but I would like to see its different colouring. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, and then the spam cloud lightning after that. As for this, we'll go for one which will always help out, so let's just go with extra fire rate on our fleet. And then the same again. Let's go with that. And also... Tracking all... You know what? Less fire rate on the enemy as well. So we're going to have two titans. We could have more, but this is just what we're going with. Well, the Awakened Empire is doing something. It's attacking our non-allies. Apparently one world is just devastated, but can't see it. Oh, it just apparently shielded a habitat, which actually has no animation to it. Still pretty brutal. Technologies. Sky Temple and Celestial Throne are now under our control. Now, what do we do with these pops? We really don't like them. They are psychic, which is great, but... I think we're going to either eat them or remove them. Our empire is particularly hostile to this particular kind of empire, so... This would make people dislike us more, though. Maybe undesirables and then just displacement. Yeah, just get rid of them. These worlds are no longer yours. They're ours. Plus, we need some more space anyway and some more jobs. So all of these jobs will do fantastically. Then we can replace all of these with stuff as well. Really? Migration controls are enabled for our main species. That doesn't seem right. Also, we shouldn't be able to assimilate them. They're already us. Has that always been that way? I can remember my synths being able to move before. Or is it because I'm authoritarian? I mean, that shouldn't really be the case either, honestly. Resettlement allowed, yeah, but... I could be missing something there, but that's causing me all sorts of problems. Splitting up my fleet, I'm going to take out the Awakened Empire. Half of their fleets are currently attacking another empire, so I'm sending my fleets over to say hello to them. The rest are all staying here, and they're going to take out the entire home system. That will completely contain the main threat of the galaxy. The Great Tempest is still there, but they're not really a threat. We still have our fleets over here, just making sure it's all nice and safe, which it is. So let's just finish off that. And last one. Yeah, the Great Tempest are never getting through that, are they? No chance. Okay, there is a gateway there, annoyingly, so they could escape this, but let's just take back this space for the other Empire they're at war with. I'm not sure where they're going to jump that gateway. Come into our territory, so they're probably going to try and reinforce their home systems, I imagine. That's yeah, as soon as the armor's gone, we just melt things. Ah, oh, you're at war with them as well. Lovely. The main thing I want, though, of course, is their home system, as always, because their home system is beautiful and powerful, and I want it. There is no longer a term limit on my custodian ship. So this is the point I've reached now. Um, we are kind of ridiculously powerful. Even if we have to swap over to energy weapons to beat the Scourge, we will have enough time to do so unless they spawn directly on top of us. The Contingency and the Unbidden, I would no longer really consider a threat, even at max difficulty. We have, I think, three or four million fleet power, fully countering the Unbidden, mostly countering the uh, Contingency, except for their armor value, but even that isn't massive because they have a lot more hull than they have armor and shields. The shields are going to be nullified pretty much by our just sheer kinetic bombardment and their hull melted. The Scourge are all armor. So I think I'm going to do is if I can reach Galactic Emperor and destroy the remaining Fallen Empires, that is the remnants of the first over here, the Watchers, the Awakened Emperor I'm currently uh, facing off against, and the Continuum, whilst being the Emperor, I will consider this a full playthrough. We have reached a victory condition, and honestly, the galaxy is all loving me. There is no war. We have brought peace through our own dictatorship. We've kind of become the thing we're 
pledge to fight against. Which happens a lot. I think we managed to lose three or four full fleets early on against two of their 400k fleets. I didn't sadly see it, but we are now winning. This is their home territory, as you can see. We're just going through system to, to system, taking over their major stations. Our ground forces of grotesque xenomorphs are butchering the population, and we are then removing the survivors from their worlds. The machines can, can stay. They're servants. But these vile fallen empires who didn't even help us when we were being tortured and all sorts of inhumane things by the Minimar, well, they're going to be simply removed. And we have learned from their mistakes. Although we are becoming somewhat like the fallen empires, somewhat like the Minimar, we are treating all of our subjects well. They're all loyal. They are not being taxed too heavily, even though we could go much worse right now with them, with the one exception of Minamar itself. Minamar, we are utterly destroying, hence why it keeps on having so many uh, revolutions and everything. Any empires which remain after these revolutions, we are going to actually treat well. We just don't like the Minamar. We're very grudge-heavy. Let's say that. If our fleets could actually go through together, that'd be great, but I was not paying attention. That's my own fault. The shields melt, the hulls melt, the armor is annoying. The last of their 500k fleets we kind of spawn in way too close then, so our main weapons were a little bit useless, but with the strike craft, we still cleared it up. That is the Fallen Empire pretty much done for now. We're just going to make sure to start bombarding their more tougher worlds around here. Our ground forces will be there straight after I've finished off with the remainder of their worlds in their original territory. Some really annoying systems around here. Some of these worlds have up to 7,000 defense force. It's going to take a very long time to conquer them. Oh, also, when did you grab that? You didn't grab the world, did you? Notice the system, I'm assuming, same over here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We don't really care about those two then all that much. We'll send some backup fleets over there soon, and in three years, we can once again go to war with the Watchers, so I've just sent over our Galactic Defense Force, which will be more than enough to finish them off and put them out of their misery. Then, we'll move all of our forces over here and take out what's left of the Fallen Empires, just the single continuum, which is definitely the weakest of all the Fallen Empires, in my opinion, since it only has one system, and these worlds have very little in the way of defense forces, and they have only, like, 382,000 fleet power, which is mostly shields, right? Oh, actually, they're... Oh, they're equal shield and hull. Uh, sorry, equal, equal shield and armor. I didn't realize that. I think that's the same as the contingency, in fact. Which is why we're only going to be okay versus the contingency. With the achievement, with thunderous applause, we are now the Galactic Emperor. And we have resounding support of our... Friends. So we're going to continuously be the Galactic Emperor. Only the silencers are here uh, as a non-Galactic Imperium normal empire. Everything else loves us. So we shall continue from there. And of course, Federations break up. You love us, right? Yeah, you love us. Everyone loves us. We're just so lovable. Well, except for you, of course. We don't really care about you. Oh, why did you get your fleet over there? Well, as long as they don't actually take a world. Why must you be so annoying? You don't actually have control of the system, though, which is interesting. Huh. Still. Might need to send a fleet over. But I'm about to do... Okay, we'll do that later. Right now, we're about to take over Alpha Refuge and take out the last of the Fallen Empires. So we're going to be at war with pretty much everyone, and then in three years' time, we can then go to war with the last of the Fallen Empires over here, the one we pretty much have already destroyed. We can't go to war yet because of the truce. And let's give you a good leader. There we go. Our Imperial Armada is ready. Oh, we got ambushed by their fleets. They were going one way and changed their mind. Once all our strike craft are out, though, that'll soon be over. Military station lost. Yeah, we need just more of the normal strike craft, I think. And there we go, the machines are down. Now here's hoping there's only a visual problem with the migration, because this is going to be so, so many worlds. So by worlds I meant to say jobs for our people, which we do desperately need. I've cut down construction on most of our, um... Most of our planets, but still. Oh, they don't have the ruined... Oh, they changed it. We used to, used to have the ruined um, pods, didn't they? You, you had to remove. Huh. Well, that's neater. Well, this is it. Still no sign of the endgame crisis. We are taking out the very, very last remnants 
of the Fallen Empire. I'm also making some energy-based ships now, just in case it is the Scourge, because as we can see, armor is just a real problem, so I'm mixing them up. The Armada is completely ignoring shields altogether and mostly ignoring armor. The new ships will be just armor-melting machines using energy weapon damage, because as well with our tech, we can get some repeatables done with that just in case. Again, not really nervous about the endgame crisis they have until this last empire is removed, and then I'm calling it. There's the Armada, been in bombardment of one of the last two worlds. Planetary. The end of the Watchers. With that, all Fallen Empires and Awakened Empires have been removed from the game, all possible mid-game events are now done, and the end-game crisis is but a potential future, which wouldn't be a threat at all. Remember, we are currently doing plus 20% damage from one of our resolutions, which is, there we go, United Front. We then also have Defender of the Galaxy, which is another plus 50%, and we are now making ships which have the lasers. In fact, most of these are now carrying lasers rather than our kinetic weapons, and we're even doing repeatables for that as well, just in case. Oh, and I've upgraded the Armada, so the Armada can now carry 800 fleet size, and all of those are once again going to be carrying Tachyon Lances and all of the energy weapons, just in case. I am going to call it here, because there is no guarantee when the Endgame Crisis will eventually arrive. So with that, thank you so much for watching. This has been a really fun video to make. I really enjoyed the, particularly the start with this new Origin. It really did put you in a weakened position, and I did not play perfectly. We should be a lot stronger than we are in our current year. Again, we are definitely at the point where no Endgame Crisis could really threaten us at, at any reasonable level. But still, if it arrived earlier, we could have easily been wiped out. I honestly think for a good chunk of time there, if it was the wrong crisis and was a little bit early, we would have been destroyed. I also probably went a little bit too heavy into the Archeo weapons. I should have gone down the, the route of Galactic Wonders and other stuff. I think maybe focusing a bit more on tech than I did could have helped out a lot. But that's the thing. With that almost endless war, which kept on almost being lost versus the Minimar, we just couldn't do anything else, just pure economy, focusing purely on our military economy, and that was absolutely it. So I've really enjoyed it. I hope to see a few bug fixes in the next few weeks, because I had to quit the game and reload at least 50 or 60 times total, and I crashed like four times and loads of other little issues, but that is just par for the course at this point for new major updates and DLC. But this may have been the worst I've seen it in a long time, so I really hope that gets fixed. If that gets fixed, then everything seems pretty good. I'm hoping the other Origins offer just as much as this one, if not more, and I'll be returning soon with a new full playthrough, but this time I will force spawn the Endgame Crisis if it doesn't arrive within 10 years of our selected time, because this was a little bit on the silly side. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. And now, to break some chains.